surrounding the golden gate simply disappear. Phyllis, Phyllis, who makes the warning bells on the cable cars play the gangs all here. Phyllis, Phyllis, who charms the crabs on fishermen's wharf right out of their shells. Who lights the lamps of Chinatown just by walking in view. Sure isn't you. Leo, Brad, you remember Leo. Uh, this is Phyllis Lindstrom, our new assistant, and Rita Watson. Hi. Uh, this is David McClellan. Dave is the copywriter on the account. How are you? Oh, doing? how are you? Yeah, looks good, Leo. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure about the model. Huh? I think maybe we should go for the average American woman. Nice figure, attractive, but. Not an excess, you know, like Phyllis. You know. You're right. We'll go flat-chested. <laughs> okay, we'll get another model in and shoot it tomorrow. Fine. Dinner's still a gift tomorrow night? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, but before you go, could I just go over the budget with you? Uh, Phyllis, you want to set up the next shot? Oh, sure. Well, shall I get dressed? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, well... I'll probably be only paying you for one hour's work. Oh, but not exactly, Phyllis. Uh, if you'll check the contract, you'll find that I have a guaranteed minimum of four and a half hours at $30 per, plus $5 meal allowance, and $22.50 wardrobe reimbursement, which all comes to $162.50. Oh, and you can just make that out to my corporation. Rita, I think I owe you an apology. Because of the way you... Look, I made a, probably what is a very common error and assumed that... Well, to put it bluntly, that you were as, as dumb as a dodo. <laughs> Shows how our prejudices can mislead us. Oh, right, I know what you mean. Oh. You know, when I first saw you, I thought you were very intelligent. <laughs> Well, I'll be in the dark room if anyone needs me. Hey, you're new here, eh? Oh. Well, I've been in San Francisco a few months now. Where are you from? Oh, I'm uh, from Minneapolis. I lived in Minneapolis until my late husband, Lars, became late. <laughs> so you're a writer. I've always admired writers. Would I know anything you've written? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, for Hudson Donuts, people go nuts. Was that yours? Ah, <laughs> oh, I've always admired that so. For Hudson Donuts, people go nuts. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to take all the credit for it. Actually, there were five of us in the room when we came up with it. <laughs> hey, look, fellas. Uh, Brad and Julia are going out tomorrow night. And uh, I'm just wondering, maybe if you and I could... Uh, you're about to ask me out, aren't you? <laughs> well, yes. I thought maybe we might double date. Uh, I, I'm hesitant because I know you're a recent widow. Oh, don't be silly. I'm still a woman, and it's always flattering to any woman to know that an attractive man would like to ask her out. I can't tell you how pleased and delighted I am that you invited me. Well, then you'll come. Oh, no, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> Something on your mind, Phyllis? Oh, Jonathan. Party. Something very, very disturbing happened today. Someone asked me to go out on a date with him. Oh, who would want to do a thing like that? <laughs> Phyllis, why should you be so disturbed just because somebody asked you to go out? Just the whole idea of dating another man just seems repulsive to me. 
Oh, don't worry, dear. I'm sure that in time, you'll get asked out by a less repulsive man. <laughs> Phyllis, you've been alone for four months now. If the situation were reversed, if you were uh, gone and Lars were still here, wouldn't you want him to go out with other women? I suppose, after a reasonable time. Well, what would you consider a reasonable time? Four, six years. <laughs> You're probably doing what a great many widows do. You're making Lars into a saint. Remember, he was just an ordinary man. A man with flaws. Flaws? Yes. Didn't he snore? Leave his clothes lying around? No. Eat crackers in bed? Oh, I was the one who ate crackers in bed. All right. Didn't Lars ever lose his temper and yell at you for that? No. Lars always overlooked whatever I did in bed. <laughs> I have to go iron a blouse. I'll be down in a little while. That's another thing. Even if I did feel like starting to get out in the world again, what about Bess? Think what an emotional shock it would be to her. Can you imagine what she would think if I were to go out with another man? Phyllis, Bess is a very mature young lady. Why don't you ask her what she'd think? All right, I will. Could you please come down a moment, dear? It's very important. What's the matter? Uh, come, sit down, darling. Uh, now, Bess, I don't want you to be upset by what I'm going to tell you. You know, Bess, I wouldn't do anything ever to hurt you, so please try to stay calm. Today, a man asked me for a date. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, I left the iron sitting right on top of my blouse, but it's okay. Hey, that's pretty neat about the date, Phyllis. Have a good time. <laughs> What is that furnace guy supposed to get here? Well, they said any minute. Well, he better hurry up. If gets any colder in here, he's gonna find us laying there frozen stiff, huddled in each other's arms. Leo, it'll never get that cold. <laughs> good morning, Leo. Oh, good morning. Can I take your coat? Oh, certainly. Thank you. It's freezing in here. <laughs> You think I could ever get that model's body? I don't know. I tried and I couldn't. <laughs> Let's call the super about the heat. Oh. And Leah, will you get the proofs ready before the agency people get here? Julie, you know, I could work a lot better if instead of just orders first thing in the morning, I also heard an occasional compliment. I like your coat. <laughs> oh, thank you. Julie, I have just made a momentous decision. Julie, I've decided to start dating again. Oh, hey, Phyllis, that's good. Next man that asks me, if I like him, I'll say yes. What's wrong with this time? Didn't David ask you out? Yes, I refused. Well, he's coming over to look at the proofs. You can let him know you changed your mind. How do I do that? Oh, Phyllis, it's 1975. Just say what's on your mind. Tell him you thought it over and you changed your mind. Just be honest. I don't know. I hate starting a relationship with the truth. <laughs> Maybe I could do it diplomatically. I'll just say, um, David, yesterday you asked me out to dinner and I refused. But, after a long and intense survey of my situation, my feelings, and my conscience, I have decided to exercise a woman's prerogative and change my mind. If you still wish to pass an evening in my company, I shall be charmed and delighted to accept your invitation. This is not an easy thing I do. 
I am not a forward person. I can only hope you will be understanding. Whatever you decide, I will be grateful for your attention, your patience. Julie, what do you think? Forget David. Let's run away and get married. <laughs> Hi, fellas. <laughs> you want to come into the studio? I got the proofs ready. David? Could I? Can I see you a minute? <laughs> David? Yesterday... You've changed your mind. Oh, that's great, Phyllis. I'll pick you up at 7.30. Oh. <laughs> Lars, forgive me. <laughs> Could you help me with this? Sure. Okay. Hey, you look beautiful. Oh, thank you. Bess, do you remember what I told you the first time you went out on a date? No. Neither do I. <laughs> Pity. I could use my advice now. You have to hold still. Oh, I don't think that was it. <laughs> you have to hold still if I'm going to fasten the necklace. Are you nervous, Phil? I guess a little. It's been a long time since I've done this. I never had to worry about whether the man I was with was enjoying himself. I was married to him. <laughs> I've forgotten what dating's all about. Bess, you go out on dates. Yeah. Well, what do you do? Stuff. What stuff? We bum around, you know. Things are different now. We talk. You ever run out of things to talk about? Phyllis, you don't have to worry about talking to men. I mean, you talked to Lars, didn't you? Very little. As you know, your daddy and I were a very in-tune couple. He had a very simple, uncomplicated way of communicating. For instance, uh, meant he ate too much. Uh, meant why did he ever cancel Bonanza? And uh, meant... Maybe I better not tell you what that means. Oh, that must be David. Hey, have a really terrific time, Phyllis. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bess, for being there when I needed you. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Phyllis. Yes? Aren't you going to answer the door? No. Phyllis, your date is waiting. Maybe you'll go away. <laughs> Come on, Phyllis. Oh, Bess, I can't go through with this. I was married for 20 years. I'm out of practice being a woman. I think it comes back to you. Now, Phyllis, answer the door. Oh. Come on. My hands are shaking. I'm sweating. I'm trembling. I'm shaking. I think I'm going to be sick. Good evening, David. Your table is ready now. Oh, thank you. Would you uh, care for a drink before dinner? Phyllis? Why don't you choose while I make up my mind? I'll have a gin and tonic. That sounds good. I'll have one, too. A Bloody Mary. That sounds better. <laughs> I'll have that instead. <laughs> How does have a scotch on the rocks? You know... Yeah, scotch on the rocks. <laughs> As a matter of fact, no. I think I will have my original choice. You didn't have an original choice. <laughs> oh. I'll have one of those. One Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> so, uh, how's the advertising business? Well, let's see. At the moment, we're doing a campaign on a ski lodge whose business has gotten slow. They haven't had any snow for three seasons. So we're emphasizing the low number of accidents on the slopes. <laughs> oh, this is fun, isn't it? Being with pleasant people in pleasant surroundings. Last time I was in a seafood restaurant was with Lars. 
<laughs> he was so funny. <laughs> we were having lobster. And he took his little claws and he said, Well, was. That's how lobsters talk, you see. Where was? Your lobster loves you. Loves you, loves you, loves you. Oh, wars. Excuse me, I'd better check on Fiwis in the ladies room. <laughs> Do it. I'm sorry, Julie. I lost up the evening. I never should have come. Oh, hey, Phyllis. Oh, it just doesn't feel right being here without Lars. In the ladies room? <laughs> Lars and I belong together. We were a team. A pair, a duo. Oh, will you pull yourself together and come back out to the table? There's a nice guy out there who wants to spend a nice evening with you. <laughs> Phyllis. <laughs> oh, Phyllis. Something wrong with your friend? Oh, yes. She's been a widow now for over four months. And this is the first time she's been out with anybody. There's a nice guy sitting out there who just wants to have an enjoyable evening with her, and she's in here bawling her eyes out. I, I, I spilled scampi on my new dress. <laughs> Try warm water and baking soda. Oh, all right, I will. And listen, why don't you go back out there and try to have a good time? After all, you only live once. Remember. You know, that's very true. <laughs> I'm going to go out there and have the best time I've ever had in my whole life. Had a girl. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> Julie, come on. <laughs> Well, here we are. Nose is all powdered. All the shine gone. You men don't know how lucky you are to have such dull noses. <laughs> well, I don't know about everybody else, but I'm starving. Oh, great. Here comes the dinner. Here's oh, your lobster. Thank you. First Lars. Now Lester. <laughs> Well. Well. Thank you for a lovely evening. Yes, it's been fun, hasn't it? <laughs> no, it hasn't. <laughs> Probably the worst date you've ever had in your whole life. No, it wasn't. I've had lots worse dates. <laughs> lots? A couple. I had one. You're just saying that. Make me feel better. No, no, really. I went out with this girl once. Beautiful, intelligent, great sense of humor. I thought I was falling in love. But after I took her home, I found out something about her that took the fun out of the whole evening. What was that? I found out she was really a man. Oh. <laughs> really? How did you find out? <laughs> she cooked such a lousy breakfast. <laughs> I like you better when you laugh. Yeah, me too. I'm not a very attractive crier. My nose runs when I cry. <laughs> runs a little when you laugh, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you want to take another shot at it? Maybe dinner with me next week or something? Sort of start over again? Right. You really want to do that with me? 
After tonight and everything? Especially after tonight. Good night, fellas. Lars. <laughs> you know, I would never do anything to violate your memory. So, if you don't want me to begin a relationship with this man, give me a sign. <laughs> Thank you, Lars. <laughs> hey, Phil, how'd the date go? What'd you do? Oh, stuff. Come on, Phil, how'd it go? Oh, we heard you come in. We just want to know if you had a good time. Looks as though it wasn't as traumatic as you were expecting. It was a very pleasant evening. What happened? Well, we had a very nice dinner. We talked, and uh, he took me home. So nothing happened. <laughs> no, a lot happened. I, I learned a lot about myself. I discovered I'm still a woman, still somewhat desirable. I realized that my life is not over, that it's just beginning. That's what I learned. Oh, well, maybe next time you'll get lucky. <laughs> You're watching ALN. Here's what's coming next.